sure you ready. Four, let them know that we run this town. One for the money, you know what it is. Two for the show, yeah, we shut it down. Three, just to make sure you ready. Four, let them Okay, guys, doing some camshaft measuring here. So see, we got the dial indicator. Got the camshaft holder set up. This one over here is a Hot Rod F cam. This one here is a older K cam. Figured there was, I, I've heard there was some differences in the measurement, but I figured let's get it up here. Let's set it up. Let's just get it all figured out. So you can see here, I'm gonna spin this. Should rotate here, should be okay. I'm gonna go slow here, cause I'm trying to do it one hand. See, we're on our base circle there. There's a little bit. There's one hundred one tenth of an inch. There's two. And there's highest lift. Right about two. 88 roughly on this indicator setup. So let's pop this hot rod cam in and see what it says. So once again, we're at 282 roughly. Back this off and we'll slide this one out. See if I can do this with one hand here. <laughs> see if I can be careful. Slide this in. There we go. Okay. Get it locked in here. Alrighty. Alright, so we're on our base circle there. Right about there. This is the F cam. There's one. Sticking a little bit. Two. Oh, yeah, it's still going. I'm trying to turn it real slow here. Oh, yeah, it's still going. Look at that. Okay, so yeah, right there. So yeah, we're at uh, roughly 91 there. I think I had it just a little bit higher. Just measuring this camera across the lobe to see if it changes at all. Yeah, see it changes when we get up over here. Ooh, yeah, look where it used to be, guys. This cam is a bit worn. <laughs> yeah, it used to be way up there. They were a bit worn here on the low, but that's okay. Wow, yeah. <laughs> and, of course, where it's kind of worn here, I don't know if you guys can see that, there's a little, little bit of wear right there. It's, it's not very much, obviously. And I think all the old camshafts have it. You can see this one has the exact same wear on it. So, either way, all the camshafts are going to be worn the same. But this one definitely has a, a bit more lift to it. More lift is always a good thing. Uh, especially when we're trying to get more boost in. More lift lets more boost in. Let's more boost build up. Ha ha ha. We're on to something, guys. Let's go. Okay. Now we got the camshaft stuff cleared off here. Show you guys a little bit of a close up on the cylinder head here. Went ahead and assembled this. Test fit it up here. Things are going to be happily married and line up perfect. This cylinder head, once I poured it with this big old turbo and this high flow manifold, this setup works really good. And it's going to spin this turbo up uh, I, I, quite um, <laughs> really fast, essentially. 
this cylinder head. Show you guys a little bit of a close up here. It is looking almost perfect, really. Original Honda casting numbers here. Missing one alignment dowel. It's out in the garage in the in the rocker assembly. What I wanted to show you here is these two. This one and this one. Those are the oil restrictors. Those need to be clean, clear. Those need to be the cleanest part, essentially, of the whole engine. I've seen two now. Those get clogged up. The cam and rockers don't get oil. One I saw, the camshaft broke in three pieces. I, I don't even really know how that happened. It must have been turning 10,000 RPM. I only got to repair it. Repaired it. Put new stuff on top. Put a new used camshaft in it with new rocker assemblies. It all fit perfect. Sent it back out. It totally fine. Honda. <sighs> Fitment is so good. It, you just have to make it that way. So essentially, these two right here. Big guys, they have to stay clear. They have to be really clean, really clear. And then everything up here gets oil and everything is good. As you see here on this end, it's lined up basically so they can use the same pieces. This is just a an O-ring that seals a block off. It's not, that doesn't go anywhere. It's just an O-ring that seals it to the, to the mating surface so that the oil stays in the assembly and does not leak out on this end or this end. Wish I had one of the assemblies in here so I could show you, but the assemblies, they just bolt on up here. These are really what matter. They, it's what matters the most, big time. Gotta have oil up here to your valve train and your camshaft, otherwise, no go. Really what I'm looking at is down here. Left the cylinder, or the exhaust gaskets in there so I could really see. Let me see if I can show you guys here. Oh yeah. You see all the extra metal there around that gasket? Let me see if I can show you a little better here. There we go. Give me a little pointer. So you see, that's all gasket. This is all extra cylinder head that can go away. You see how much is there? There's a bunch all the way around. All the way around. <laughs> a whole bunch all the way around. And yet, even more. So, as you can see, once we port this cylinder head, it's gonna flow like gangbusters. <laughs> At least, this is the exhaust side. Flip around here and I'll show you guys. Got my pig mats down here, so don't leak on my <laughs> kitchen. <laughs> it's cold outside. Let me get a towel here. <clears throat> the intakes here, they're a bit different. The exhaust side is real short. Not really much to port as far in the port. It's really just on the outside of the port. The intakes, as you can see here, the intake port is real long. It goes back in the cylinder, drops down, or back in the cylinder head. The exhaust port, as you can see, this is all just extra material right here. It's all just cooling material. The cylinder head ends right here. The exhaust port is only about that long. Up here, as you can see, the, the intake port, they're, they're not short, but they're, and they're not super long, but they're, they're perfect, really, with these added on pieces that Honda made. Honda did everything for a reason. And in here, you can feel there's a lip where essentially where these pieces join the cylinder head, there's a big lip on all of them. And, and they're, they're crusty. You can refine that quite a bit. 
Honda didn't really need to because these motors worked way above their expectations already, so they didn't really need to put the extra work in. Let's just see here. If it'll light up in there at all. Yeah, it's problem is it's really dirty. <laughs> need to get in there and give it a good cleaning. And then it's gonna get fully ported and polished. There, there you can see some of the extra. So really up there in the roof is what I'm gonna work on. When I port stuff, what I do, it's the old hip hop, I call it raised roof, set the roof on fire. What happens? When you give airflow two ways to turn, if you force the air in, if you're forcing the air in and it has to go down, you're only giving it one time to turn, it slows it down. If you give it several times to turn and curve that arc, that's how you increase flow. Get back to normal here. There we go. So, let me refine what I said there. When you, when you let air turn more than one time going into a surface, the air will res respond and not change its velocity or flow. The air doesn't, it's not that it doesn't want to turn, when it has to turn ab abruptly one time, it restricts it, it returns some of it, some of it comes through, it also lessens the pressure in the flow. If you let the air kind of essentially come in, go up, raise the roof, and then come down and go in, it goes a lot faster. Naturally aspirated, boosted, supercharged, it doesn't matter. Turbo, even with nitrous, the more air you can flow in your air pump, the better it's gonna pump air. Air pump, air pump, make it pump more air, it works better. Go figure. That was what Honda taught the most was refine your theories. Don't worry about building engines, tightening bolts. You should have learned that a long time ago. Honda taught how to refine engineering and refine the processes. He built these engines knowing that we were going to turn them up and make them way better. He made a RC-166. It was a 250cc with six cylinders that would rev to 20,000 RPM in the early 60s. <laughs> we're good to go, guys. Just need to figure out my process. Do a little engineering. Look like I got some good turbos. Look like I got some good tools to do supporting here. Got the camshafts all measured. Way more to come, guys. <laughs> yeah.